So in this video I'm going to show you how to make liquid metal thermal compound. If you haven't heard about liquid metal thermal compound before, I'll quickly get you up to speed. So most conventional thermal compounds are typically metal oxide based in paste form and they do a fairly good job of transferring heat but they aren't perfect. On the other hand, the liquid metal we're going to make in this video does an excellent job of transferring heat because it is made entirely from three pure metals that when combined make, you guessed it, liquid metal at room temperature. Perhaps the most common application is for computer enthusiasts, especially when overclocking and every degree of cooling performance really counts. Probably the most well-known liquid metal at room temperature is mercury, but I want to assure you the liquid metal I'll be making in this video has nothing to do with mercury. Mercury is dangerous to handle with bare skin and if ingested can be fatal, whereas the three metals I'll be using to make my liquid metal are safe to handle with bare skin, provided you do, don't do something stupid like drink it, which you obviously should not do, you'll be just fine. So you don't have to worry about this being one of these instructional YouTube videos that ends like this. Seems okay. Now you are going to need a blowtorch which we're going to use to heat the three metals up warm enough to get them to melt together. It's actually quite a low temperature, only around two or three hundred degrees. And I'm going to use a glass test tube to hold the metals in. Here is everything you'll need to make liquid metal. Let's start by taking a quick look at each of these metals. Tin is a fairly soft metal with a subtle yellow hue. When a piece of tin is bent or crushed it makes an interesting noise like glass or ice cracking. Indium is the softest metal you can hold in your hands. Indium is so soft you can scratch it with a fingernail. And you can feel like the Hulk by bending a thick piece of the metal with your bare hands. Indium can be easily cut using a regular knife. Gallium is probably the most interesting metal we have here. It sounds hard and brittle when solid. I was expecting gallium to bend quite easily when solid, but it took a fair amount of effort to bend this piece. Gallium's melting point is 30 degrees Celsius. Depending on the temperature of your room, gallium can be either solid or liquid at room temperature. I'm using a hot air gun to melt the gallium. Melted gallium resembles mercury, but unlike mercury, it's safe to handle. This gallium is barely warm to the touch, but look how fast it melts this ice cube. And no, this footage is not sped up. Gallium is a very good thermal conductor, which is why it makes an excellent thermal compound. First, I'll weigh out my gallium, then I can work out how much indium and tin I need to weigh out. For every gram of gallium, you need the amount shown on screen of tin and indium. Ideally, you want a proper holder for your test tube, or like me, you can use duct tape and WD-40 to solve every problem in life. I'll place my gallium in a Ziploc bag and melt it in warm water. Once it's melted, I can snip off the corner and pour it into my test tube. Nothing sounds quite like liquid gallium being poured. With the indium and tin added to the test tube, it's time to turn up the heat, but not too much heat. I'm being careful to evenly heat the test tube to avoid cracking the glass. All three metals have relatively low melting points. Using a low flame it only took me around two minutes to melt all the metals together. I left it to cool down to room temperature and transferred it to a glass bottle for easy storage. This is the final product. It's called Gallon Stan, but that doesn't sound cool enough for computer enthusiasts out there, so most often it's rebranded as liquid metal. As you can see, Gallon Stan can easily stick to the sides of a glass bottle. 
you'd be forgiven for thinking the inside of this bottle had a mirror finish applied. Now before you go applying liquid metal to your CPU's cooler, you should be made aware that if you apply liquid metal to aluminium, quite an interesting reaction happens. Here I have an alloy heat sink. I'm going to apply a drop of gallon stand to the heat sink and scratch off the oxide layer to expose fresh alloy for the gallon stand to bite into. So I left it overnight and in the morning this is what happened. Twelve hours ago this was a solid aluminium heat sink. The gallon stand has turned the alloy into this dark coloured crumbly powder. I'm sure if I applied more than a small drop it would have easily eaten through the alloy fins also. So if you're planning to use liquid metal on a heat sink, you must make sure that the heat sink is nickel plated wherever it makes contact with the liquid metal to avoid the liquid metal completely destroying your CPU's cooler overnight. Let's figure out if it's worth the cost and hassle. So on Amazon at the moment, one of the most popular liquid metals retails for $12 and for your money you get 0.15 grams of liquid metal. That means that for every gram of liquid metal, you'll be shelling out 80 US dollars. So this will be the price benchmark I'm going to use for comparison. So here is the material cost of the three metals I used to make my liquid metal. The yield was almost 30 grams and cost just over $20 to make. This means that my DIY liquid metal cost 69 cents per gram to make versus the commercial stuff at $80 per gram. Well, I'm in the wrong industry. I'm not going to make YouTube videos. I'm going to go start a liquid metal factory. See you guys. And the price can't be justified by the manufacturer saying, well, we include 11 secret herbs and spices in our liquid metal, because it isn't the case. The stuff you buy in the retail stores is exactly the same as what I've made in this video. Now when it comes to measuring the performance improvement liquid metal offers over traditional thermal compounds, it gets a little bit tricky because it depends on several factors such as what are you trying to cool, how much heat does it put out, what sort of cooler are you using and all sorts of things. So I won't go over that in this video, but what I will suggest is if you want to see comparisons between traditional thermal compounds and liquid metal, then uh, jump on YouTube, search something generic like liquid metal, benchmark, and you'll get a whole lot of results and you'll be able to see the improvements that liquid metal offers. So that about wraps it up for this video. If you found it useful, please give it a like, it'll be much appreciated. Also consider subscribing down below, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.